Today, we're diving into a key metric used by analysts and investors alike, Compound Annual Growth Rate, or CAGR. In the next few minutes, you'll learn exactly what CAGR is, how to calculate it, and we'll also go through a step-by-step -step example in Excel. By the end, you'll know how to apply this powerful tool to your analysis and financial models. Before we move over to Excel and take a look at uh, how to calculate CAGR, let's talk a bit more about it. So, CAGR represents the hypothetical annual growth rate of an investment, assuming profits are reinvested over time. Essentially, the way the formula works is that it takes the current value and the future value, usually an estimate, or if we are calculating CAGR on a historical data, then we get the beginning of the period, what the value was, and then the end of the period, the future value. This is uh, then calculated to the power of one over the number of periods, and we deduct one, and that's how we get the compound annual growth rate. In essence, what it shows is what percentage of growth we would need to have for each period to be able to get from the present value to the future value. As a metric, this is really uh, helpful, really useful because uh, it smooths out volatile returns. So if we have a lot of volatility throughout uh, the periods that we're analyzing, CAGR eliminates that, which makes it easier to compare different investments and uh, different asset classes because it's represented as a percentage so we don't need to do any normalization of the data it's uh, really useful for forecasting and uh, also for like i mentioned comparing between different companies different periods because it's all presented as a percentage and uh, another really uh, good thing here is that because the calculation considers the numbers of periods, it essentially uh, takes time value of money concept into consideration. So the more periods you have, the less this percentage would be, given that uh, you have the same future value and present value. So it considers how fast you get from the present value to the future value, which is really helpful when analyzing uh, different investments or when you want to uh, use this for uh, forecasting. This uh, smoothing out the volatile returns also makes it into its drawbacks because essentially Kagar hides volatility and risk because it assumes a steady growth. And uh, you know, especially in uh, investment, growth is usually not steady, meaning that the year when you're analyzing this and trying to make uh, decisions for what to do in this period might suffer from this volatility that uh, you're smoothing out and not see. Another drawback uh, for this metric is that it does not account for inflows or outflows during the investment period. So for example, if, um, if we did a secondary investment into the same uh, asset, this would show as part of the return because it would be added to the future value. There's no way for uh, the CAGR calculation to know that this is additional capital that we provided. It's not part of uh, the growth of the investment itself. So if uh, we have made numerous investments, this would lead to inflated uh, CAGR, which might be misleading. The compound annual growth rate is uh, a really powerful and a really popular metric, especially in investment banking, because uh, essentially it uh, represents what annual growth rate an investment would have to achieve to get to a specific future value. So we can do it looking forwards, having a present value, and then calculating what percentage on average this investment should grow each year to get to this future value in n number of years. We can also look backwards and see how did uh, a specific metric grow on an annual basis so that we can use that in forecasting or financial modeling. I also want to mention uh, total return. So total return is uh, essentially the future value plus any dividends or payouts over the present value minus one. And this is usually like considered less sophisticated than CAGR because um, it doesn't uh, factor the, uh, the time duration, the time value of money concept. It shows the total return of the investment, but it doesn't consider how long it took. While CAGR incorporates the time value of money concept 
and uh, this makes it a more sophisticated uh, tool to analyze investments. Another popular metric is the internal rate of return. The difference here is that uh, Kager only looks at the initial value and ending value and assumes a steady growth, while uh, the internal rate of return uh, formula is uh, a bit more complex and it can account for multiple cash flows during uh, different periods, which makes it more uh, flexible and uh, better suited to analyze more complex uh, investments or, uh, or projects. It is a more sophisticated tool than Kager, but at the same time, it requires more effort and more data to calculate, which also fuels into the popularity of Kager. Now let's take a look uh, at an Excel example. What I have here is uh, just my historical sales performance for uh, five years from 2020 to 2024. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to analyze the performance and uh, then use that for financial modeling, essentially for sales forecasting. First, let me uh, copy this header here and I'm going to say growth performance. Here I can calculate the growth rate. I was going to calculate the total return and then I'll calculate the Kager formula. So for a uh, growth rate, pretty simple revenue and uh, year one divided over previous year revenue minus one format this as a percentage, copy it to the side and uh, we have our uh, growth rate. I also want to calculate an average growth rate. I'm going to use that average formula like that and we see that on average we grew but by 22.8 percent however if we look at the total return formula we can calculate our total return as uh, the end value divided over the beginning value minus one but i'm also gonna divide it because this is like for the total period and i want to get an average for each period i'm gonna divide that by four the number of periods and you see here that we have four periods but uh, this is at the end of the year so this is our zero period and then we have four years later we're achieving this okay so let's copy the formatting here we have 15 percent of total return averaged out for five years and uh, then if we uh, take a look at the Kager formula so this would uh, equal our future value divided over our present value this whole thing is raised to the power of one over the number periods four minus one from the whole thing copy the formatting here 12.4 and uh, we can always check that with the excel formula rri we don't have a kager function but we have rri which is uh, equivalent interest rate for the growth of an investment essentially calculates uh, the same thing it asks for the number of periods for the present value and the future value and it should give us the same move it over here it should give us the same result so this is our right function so this is our compound annual growth rate now let's see how we can use uh, that to forecast and uh, what's the difference between some of those I'm gonna copy this uh, actually gonna copy it with the ears here put it over there and uh, here I'll have sales performance forecast actually gonna start from 2025 now and uh i'm gonna do two forecasts forecast via the average growth rate and then forecast via the total return and here we also do a forecast via cover just so we'll be able to look at uh, what each one of those would show us so for 2025 this would essentially be uh, my last year 2024 sales multiplied by one plus my uh, average growth rate. I'm going to fix that with F4 and then I can copy it to the side, edit it, and I'm just going to grab this and place it over here. So it's the previous year multiplied by one plus the growth rate. Copy that over to the side. And uh, this is how our sales forecast would look if we use uh, the average growth rate. Then if we use the total return averaged for four years, we'll have a similar thing. So this multiplied by one plus my total return, fix it with F4. And then I'm going to move that to this one here. And this is what we get. You see that it's considerably below 
our forecast via the average growth rate. And then forecasting with Kager, which is more sophisticated than the two above, will get the sales revenue from the past year multiplied by one plus our Kager percentage. Perfect. And then, uh, yeah, I need to fix that with F4. And also, I'm going to drag that down here. So it uses the previous period. Copy that over to the side. And uh, you see that we're actually pretty close to the to using the total return. But uh, the average growth rate is way off. And that's why we almost never use like averages. It's much better to use something uh, that's still fairly easy to calculate like Kager, but at the same time, it's much more uh, sophisticated and provides much better uh, data than something as a simple average of the growth rates. Now you know how to calculate and use Kager to assess the growth of your investment or business metrics. If you want to dive deeper into a financial modeling and financial analysis, I have prepared a completely free five-hour financial modeling course in this video up here. It will take you from an empty Excel spreadsheet all the way to a fully dynamic assumptions driven five year financial model that you can use for any business. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this video.